talked about Lawrence, Lawrence's wife, and other folks. Congress petitioned Mrs. Washington to bury him in the Capitol. If you've been there, you know there's a beer right below the Senate chamber. Congress doesn't come here to get him until 1832. By this time, the family has constructed a new tomb, which would be that black jewel with a, a brick building behind it. In 1837, uh, uh, excuse me, 1831, they moved Washington, 21 other people, and Mrs. Washington bring them all down here, put them all behind the black door. 1835, they put this enclosure up. 1837, they bring the Washingtons out in the lead line from their original coffin, sealing them with coffin got have been sealed ever since. Continued burning people back there until 1835. Nobody's burning them to these. These are the memorials to the last three families on Mount Vernon. Washington dies with no direct descendants. He leaves Mount Vernon to his nephew, Bushrod, who's memorialized here. Bushrod's behind the black door. He dies and leaves the place to his nephew, John Augustine. John Augustine is here. He's behind the black door. He's memorialized here. His wife sells Mount Vernon to the Mount Vernon Ladies Association, the ladies that own, own it right now. At the end of the American Revolution, 1781, that's that siege in Yorktown. But after the siege, George Washington kept his army together for three additional years because he was fighting that these uh, 13 original colonies now states were going to splinter off. So he writes a letter to the 13 governors of these original colonies now states, imploring them to keep this, uh, this uh, union together. Shortly, I'm, uh, a short story I'm going to tell you about Newburgh. You can some kind of an idea of what he, was, what he was into. Newburgh, New York, in between the 1781 and 1783, his officers had decided that they wanted to take charge. They wanted uh, George Washington to be a, a dictator. So they called a meeting. George Washington comes into that meeting. He stands before his office and he's getting ready to just take this country over. He stands up. He stands before him. He pulls out a piece of paper and he can't read it. So he takes some spectacles out of his pocket and puts them on his eyes. And he looks up and he says, I have not only become white-haired in service for my country, but blind also. The grown men cry because they knew what George Washington was talking about. We're getting ready to give up what we just fought for for 80 years. So Washington writes this, and you're going to read that at the end of it. All right? So, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Hats off, hands over heart. Start us off right here. You give us a prank up again. To the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Then we're going to have the two uh, uh, veterans on either side. Just take it right back in there. Just, uh, uh, just be on. Yeah, there you go. Take it right in there. If you want to take photos of them, you can. And right there, that's far enough. And kind of turn around. You don't want to get too far. No shadows. And turn around and give us a, a look this way. And you uh, guys, so if you want to take photos of them, you can. <laughs> Even though we do this twice a day, there's a finite number of people on the entire planet who's ever done it. Thank you. Thank you. Stand, there, stand with your back to it. You get great acoustics. Thank you. Okay, now read loudly. George Washington's prayer for his country. I now make my earnest prayer that God will have the United States in its holy protection, that he will incline the hearts of the citizens to calibrate. Thank you. Cultivate. Cultivate a spirit of subordination, obedience to government, and to entertain brotherly affection and love for one another. To the fellow citizens of the United States at large, and particularly for the brethren in the field. who have served in the field. And finally, that he will most graciously be pleased and dispose us all to justice to love, mercy, to demean ourselves with that charity, humility, and pacific temper of mind, which we are the characteristics right, of the divine author of our yes. blessed religion without an, an humble um, imitation. imitation, of whose example in these things we can never hope to be a happy nation. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you. All right, we'll move out this way.